could definitely turn these into improper fractions, which is definitely recommended. But I don't want to say that that's what you have to do. You learn that I want you to think about. Can we do this another way? Can we think about this another way? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah? You like, try, you try to get, you get 10 as the denominator. You do uh, five times two, five times two. Right. Two times two. Right. What we could do, we are finding a common denominator of 10 here in a second. What we could do is we could just, we could add up all the whole parts. Right? And then handle the fractions. And then, you know, if that fraction turns out to be a proper, we could bring out some whole parts of it as well. Right? Yeah. So we can put together these whole parts. That'd be uh, negative 19. Okay? I'm kind of using my advantage. I see, well, it looks like uh, this thing's going to simplify and it's going to have uh, a whole component to it. It's going to be a proper fraction. And I can pull the sum of it off of there. Okay, so I have the negative 19, that's all of the uh, whole parts. Because this is really negative 3 plus a half plus negative 7 plus 2 fifths plus negative 9 plus 3 tenths, right? Isn't yeah. it? That's what 3 and 3 tenths means. Or not negative 9 and 3 tenths. Okay? Sorry. We have to respect the, the signs of these still. Like this is still a negative number, and so this is still a negative half. Right? So it's like negative 3 plus a half, or negative 3 minus 1 half. Okay? So we still have a minus 1 half minus two-fifths, and minus three-tenths. Uh, so don't you turn that into like the common denominator? Yes. Okay, I'm so this part's handled. This part we can have a common denominator. Common denominator of 10, so we can have, uh, let's grab another color, so we can just kind of quickly write on top of it. We've got four-tenths, right, and five-tenths. So we have together, we have negative 5, negative 4, or sorry, negative 9, negative uh, 12. So negative 19 minus 12 tenths. Right. And if we have negative 19 minus 12 tenths, that's really negative 19 and 12 tenths. That's what that means. And we can simplify it to 6 over 5. And six fifths, but six fifths is bigger than one, so we could say that the six fifths is one more to go with the whole. Oh. Right? So negative 20 and one more fifth. Oh. Or you could turn it into an improper fraction, find a common denominator for all three, do it that way, turn it back to a mixed number, or don't turn it to a mixed number. But do try and simplify it, simplify it down if there's common factors. Yes? Um, on some of these, like, Yesterday you said don't worry about uh, turning them into mixed, uh, like mixed fractions because mm -hmm. like proper fractions kind of are easier. To, yeah, they're more useful. Yeah, and um, so I didn't change them into mixed numbers and then it got like really confusing on my homework and kind of didn't do so well. Because you didn't turn them into mixed numbers? And like, well no, like on the homework it, uh, like I couldn't, couldn't check the answers in the back or something? Or you couldn't check them today in class? No. Well, like, oh, never mind, never mind. Never mind. I, 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 never mind. <laughs> well, let's say you were a person who didn't turn it into a mixed number. Uh, let's, let's turn this into an improper fraction. Okay? Well, Really, we would want to be able to add negative 20 to negative 1 fifth, right? So really, negative 20 minus 1 fifth, that's what this is. Does that make sense? Negative 20 minus 1 fifth, that's negative 20 and 1 fifth, right? I know there's this thing where you can multiply 5 times 29. Yes, that works, but let's just add with common denominators. What's the, what common denominator do we need to use here? 5. Okay, so we need to have this be a common denominator of 5, so we multiply by 5, multiply this by 5, so it's 5 times negative 20, negative 100, over 5, minus 1 over 5, so it's negative 100 over 5 minus 1, negative 1 over 5. If, it was, if you had an improper fraction and you want to turn it into a mixed fraction, would you do that or you go vice versa? Or
Any other questions about any of these? You seem still a little distressed. No. Which is that my answers were like 10 times different than yours. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know. So you think you might have done wrong, but you're not sure why? Yeah, I kind of did it wrong. Okay. Can you come over and get your I forgot to say Yeah, I was like, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a major blonde moment, but like, what? <laughs> Is it possible that you have an answer like this that is like has a common factor that needs to be canceled between the numerator and the denominator? Like it just needs to be simplified? Yeah, probably. Like if I were to multiply this by uh, like a two, then I might have negative two oh two over ten. So we're going to multiply these three things together. Let me draw a little box on this answer so we can ignore it. Oh, that was just cool. Oh my god. So we're going to multiply three numbers together. Let's just use what we know about numbers. If we're going to multiply, let's handle just the sign of the number first. Uh, negative times negative times negative will be? Positive. Whoa. Negative times negative is positive. Times another negative is negative. Right? So whenever you're multiplying numbers and you got a couple negatives, you compare those negatives together, you got positive, and if you have an odd man out with a negative, then the whole thing will be negative, right? Yeah, um, yeah. negative eight nights is very negative, pulling down the whole group. Um, so then we're going to multiply straight across, right? We're actually going to talk about uh, cross-canceling today, uh, which is possible here, right? In fact, let's just use this opportunity to talk about it. Rather than multiplying straight across and getting something like uh, 24 okay. over, uh, let's see, it's wrong. Oh, I just did it. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Sounds believable. And then having to simplify it all the way back down. Let's cancel out any common factors that we have before we start. So what we have here is like uh, between, let me see if I wanna, I, I wanna talk about this in a little bit more detail so that we don't, we don't magic cancel things, but we do cancel it in a way that makes sense. Can we stop that? Okay. Do you have a question? Please ask the question. If you don't have a question. Um, so when we multiply all of these together, what we're doing is really taking all the factors of all those numbers and then we're mushing them all into one number, multiplying them all together. And then we go to simplify it, then we're going to try and find all the factors again, which we already had, like it was more factors before we multiplied together. We're going to try and find any factors that we have in common in 24, but 24 is just 3 times 1 times 8. That's where we got 24. So let's start before we put all those factors together into one big number. Let's start with the factor form. We know that these are just going to get multiplied together. These are going to get multiplied together. Whatever this number is will be the numerator. Whatever all this multiplied together is will be the denominator. So let's just start with it. It's more simple. And realize that really we're going to have like one big fraction that's multiplied all the way straight across like that. And of course it's going to be negative. And we realize any common factor you have between the numerator and the denominator, we can cancel them wherever they are. Just like this, 3 divided by 3, that's really what's going on, is 1. So we uh, add that. Uh, the 4 here divides the 4 in 8, so we're going to 2. And then that's 
all that we can do. So instead of doing that and then simplifying it, let's just start with these smaller factors, go from there. We have a negative 1 times 1 times 2 and a 1 times 1 times 9, negative 2 negatives. That's all cross-canceling is. It's just recognizing these numbers are about to get mushed together into one fraction. Why don't I just think of it as one big old fraction that has already been kind of factored in the numerator and denominator and then divide those factors out. Right, so that's 18. Any questions? Couple of 17s, which 17? Um, wow. The one on 2.4. Right here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. Let's see. We're multiplying these things together. I like to, I'm going to, whole numbers and fractions together. I like to put a denominator of one there. Is our answer going to be positive or is it going to be negative? Positive. Negative. Yeah, positive times negative. What's that? Negative. Okay, so that's a negative. Times a negative. Positive. Positive. I'm give myself a little note. This is going to be positive. And uh, let's see if we can, before we start motion all the factors into one giant number, let's see if we can find some common factors between what will be the numerator. 18 and 3. 18 and 3 have a common factor of 3. That's 6. Let's look at this as one big fraction. Um, 5, 2, no, no common factors left. 6 times 2 times 1 is 6. 1 times 1 times 5. 6 fifths would be 1, 1 and 1 fifth. Yeah, that's not the two. Forgot to multiply. Oh, I did say six times two. I was like, I didn't do six times two. You did say that. Yeah, that counts for something. <laughs> okay, so then it's two and two. Oh, that just changed my whole day. So we just have a half minus five sixths. So we are, I mean, we're thinking it's really addition of fractions in case it helps. One half plus a negative five sixths. If we're going to put these together, I can't take five of these away from one of those, right? Why not? It doesn't make sense. It's a good answer. Not no. The answer is not because we need a common denominator. The answer. Well, what is your? Answer? What? what? Why can't you take five of these from one of these? Why doesn't it make sense? It's not the same thing. One. Well, I mean, if I have one thing. If, if, um, if you have one dollar, can I take five dollars from you? Yeah. Mathematically, I could. Yeah. Yeah. What would that mean? So what does that mean between me and Mikhail? You owe me. You owe me. But that's not the reason why we can't do that here. Why can't we take five of these away from one of those? We can go into negative numbers if needed, but why is taking five of these not make sense to take away from one of these? Those are halves. Halves, and these are? Six. Sixths. And what makes a half different from a sixth? A half is bigger. A half is bigger. A sixth is smaller. So I can't take five small things away from one big thing 
until I make the things the same size by cutting them into pieces, right? We talked about that. We took a yeah, yeah, big yeah. pie and cut it into smaller pieces, and that helped you out and made sense. But yeah. we can't take five of the six from one of the halves, so we need to turn them both into six. We can turn these into sixths, right? Yeah. So it would be three sixths yeah. minus five sixths. Now I can take five of these from three of these, and we do have to go negative. Negative two sixths. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's not. We got a simplified. Yes, sorry. I just got so excited about Mikhail's victory. Wait. Oh, yes. slips and everything goes over there. All right, we're going to add three halves plus seven fifths. Why can we not add three of these to seven of those? Because what? Because uh, you can't take seven fifths and three fifths. I mean, like, you can, but you have to have a common OK, all right. What about just as far as making sense? What What is it that doesn't make sense about Taking three of those and adding seven of those to them. Okay. Think of a picture of fractions. Like how do we envision pictures of fractions? It's pieces of a pie. Okay. So it doesn't make sense to put three of these with seven of those. If we're thinking of pieces of a pie, because why? The pie has to be the pie. The pieces have to be the same size here and here. Here they are bigger than this halves are bigger than fifths, and if I add three halves plus seven fifths and say that I have ten or something, it's it make sense. So they're, they're ten differently shaped things, differently sized things. Okay, so yes, we do need a common denominator. We're going to cut each of the pies into equal numbers of pieces. What is that common denominator, common denominator going to be? Total number of pieces. Ten. Ten. So we'll do like five, five. Ten is, is fine by me. Two and nine tenths is also fine. Either way, this one or this one is fine. All right. So if their answer is uh, fourteen elevenths, and it does this. Not clear at all how they got to 14 elevenths, and it's just wrong. Zero. How can I tell how well you understand it if I have no way of knowing what you understand? There's no evidence for it. Okay. Uh, one, they did some kind of math. They showed some kind of work. All right. Two, uh, they showed some kind of work, and you can kind of tell it has to do with this problem. Like it, it, it actually is in the direction of adding two fractions together. So maybe they like multiply the denominator by some number, but you have no idea why they chose that number, but they, their brain is in the same ballpark as finding common denominators. Three is, you really see clear evidence that they at least have gotten to one time. Maybe they're just forgetting the middle or the last few steps. Four is, you know, really small mistake. Really small, not conceptual, but procedural mistake. And if I was shown this woman does not make mistakes, she just is the best survivor. <laughs> Don't say anything about anything beyond what's on Netflix currently. You ruined that for me, I will fail you. Sorry, I haven't either. Okay, watching Netflix coming out 28. The next installment of Walking Dead. And Bones is coming out, but that's too much of a degree of greatness. All right, here we go. 
We're going to multiply these two together to save ourselves some time. We just want to double check and make sure you know, we're just multiplying them together. It's just one big fraction. Do the numerator and the denominator share any factors? No. Or push those factors together? No, 5 and 3, no. 25 and 6, no. 5 and 6, no. 25 and 3, no. No. Okay, 5 times 125, or sorry, 5 times 25 is 125 over 6 times 3 is 18. See, in this case, it is a bit all or nothing. Not a lot of room for work to be shown. Uh, or mistakes to be made, like you did it or you didn't do it. What if we did like a few more tests, a lot of tests to like uh, narrow it down, like make it a dominant or upper fraction? Oh, uh, mixed number? Yeah. But then you did it wrong, or you did it right? You did it right. So it's the same. Yeah, what's the mixed number? The mixed number, well, let's figure it out. 16, 16. And 17, 18? No, 6. Oh, 6. Yeah, I got two gyms all going. Okay. Last one. We're going to divide two thirds by five sevenths. We have to find the reciprocal. Are you sure it's not two over three? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. God, I'm sure. Now, how are we sure? Second. Is the second one? Yeah, I don't know. This is the second one. Okay, I'm going to remind you of something. Now, this isn't working. I would expect you shown. I would expect this to look something like two thirds times seven fifths. Uh, look for common factors. They're not there. Fourteen over fifteen. Okay, but I want to remind you. How you know it's the second. Question? How do you just like mm -hmm. draw to like multiply? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, how do you I would. Oh, yeah. I mean, even more confusing than just remember to flip over the second one. That's what I did. I just flipped the second one. I mean, yes, it will work every time, but there's just so much room for mistakes. Yeah. Real quick, please pay attention. If I write this two thirds divided by five sevenths as a fraction, then I can show that I'm for sure that it's supposed to be the reciprocal of the denominator. If I, if I multiply the numerator denominator by seven fifths, which is fine, because this fraction is just another fraction that's equal to 1, so I'm not really doing anything here, so multiplying by 1. But in the denominator, I get 33 over 33. That's 35 over 35. What's 35 divided by 35? And it's 1. You get 1 in the denominator, and here we get 14 15. That's exactly what we should get. I really recommend, if you can't answer the question of why do we take the reciprocal of the second one, uh, Write all division of fraction problems like this, and every time multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator here and here, and then we'll always be sure that we're doing it correctly. Here, I can always plant a seed of doubt. Are you sure that it's not the reciprocal of 2 thirds? Yes. No, I'm not so sure. I'm a math teacher. I'm sure I could confound you enough like asking you just, are you sure? Is it two thirds? Oh, sorry. You remembered it wrong. You're supposed to take the reciprocal of the first one. If I tell you that long enough and loud enough, you're going to believe me. But if you do this, there's no arguing about it. It's not a rule. It's not a thing to remember. It just is the truth. It just is math. Okay? Anyway, there you go. There are the correct answers. Score it. Uh, total out of 15. Head it back. Take a look. Once you're done, take a look at your own thing. You get the last in. I just want you to add those three fractions together. Okay, by now, we are familiar with the idea of when we add fractions, we find a common denominator. You need to find a common denominator for all three. So I want you to work on that. Okay. Uh, so let's start with fact that we could multiply all the denominators together. Uh, we can also take our headphones out and you know, use both ears to listen. Um, we can multiply all the denominators together 
and get a big number, right? And if we multiply them all together, then 12 would go into that number, 70 would go into that number, and 75 would go into that number, right? Yes. There would be some massive number. And in the end, you're going to include a lot of factors you didn't need to, uh, both in the denominator and the numerator. And then when you go to simplify, we have to search through these giant numbers to see if they have any factors in common. Okay? So I don't like that. I mean, it's definitely legitimate, and you, know, you could go about it that way. But if you trust me, I'm going to promise that if you pay attention to this method and you make it your practice to look at common denominators this way, when it comes time to find common denominators in fractions that have variables in them, okay, the more algebra we do, the more variables we have to work with. Okay? We keep challenging ourselves. Okay, we get that. We know how to solve those kinds of equations. What about this kind of equation? And we know how to use fractions when they have you know, numbers in them. What about if we throw variables in there? Okay? So if you do commit yourself to thinking about finding common denominators in this way, it will be so much easier to transition into something else. Okay? It's very mathematical, it's very direct, it's very exact. Okay? It's very surgical. Okay? So let's start with we're looking for a common denominator. That would be a number that all of these, all three of these do what to? Go into. Okay, go into our Let's use the word divides, because it's even more mathematical, right? It divides that number. Can we hear I got 10,500. OK, you got that number. Right. And how did you get that number? Um, I took 75 and kept times it by the. Uh, by 2, by 3, by yeah. 4, by 5. Oh, and I, I see a 70 one, goes so into it. it. Yeah. OK, let's see if we can find an even smaller number than that. Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out. OK, so, well, we're going we're gonna to walk you through this, right? OK, so. We're looking for a number that I can multiply 12 by something and get, let's just call it D for the denominator. All right? We all agreed on that? Yeah. That's what you did. You, but you started with 75, you multiply 70, because it's the biggest number, right? And so it's going to like jump up the holes faster than those guys. OK? So I want to be able to multiply 12 by something and get the common denominator. I want to be able to multiply 70 by something and get the common denominator. And multiply 75 by something and get the common denominator. Let's start with that. Are we all good? Is that pretty simple? Right? Start from a pretty simple place. So as long as I can write to this denominator as 12 times something, 12 divides it, goes into it. As long as I can write the denominator, I can rearrange the factors in a different way and get 70 times some number. And I can rearrange the factors in a different way to get 75 times some number. So as long as I, in all three cases, get the same number. Right? And the goal here is to get the number that has like the least number of factors involved, the smallest factors that I possibly can, without having to just multiply all of these together. Okay. So first, let's start off by taking 12, and let's just factor it as much as it can be factored. 3 times 4, 3 carries through 2, and 2. So to say that 12 is a factor of this number is to say that 3 times 2 times 2, right? All three of those factors exist. It's a prime factorization. The prime factors 3, 2, and 2 need to be in this number. Okay. Then we start with 70, or we go on to 70. We got uh, 10, 7, 2 and 5 and 7. It doesn't look too good. Let me fix that 2 and 5. 2 and 5 and 7. Right. So if 2 times 5 times 7 is somewhere in the factors of this number, then 70 goes into it. Agreed? Yes. Okay. Then 75, 3 times 25. 3 times 5 times 5. So if the factors 3, 5, and 5 are in this number, then 75 goes into that number as well. Okay. But the reason we get such a big common denominator is because we repeat factors that we don't need to repeat. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pick D right now, the denominator. Get a common denominator. I need 12 to be in that number, so I need factors of 3 and 2 and 2, right? That makes 12. 12 times something needs to make the denominator. Okay, 
I also need a 2 times 5 times 7. But if I go over here, if I, if I write 2, there's no need to put this 2 here, a third 2. I could use this 2 from the previous number. Forget about that 2. Let's do a, just a 5 and a 7. This part is 12. 12 times 35 makes, well, a number that 12 and 70 both go into. Or, we're not done yet, you know, we got to get 75, but 2 times 5 times 7, that's uh, 70, right? So 70 times 6 also gives us this number that 70 goes into. 12 goes into this number, 70 goes into this number, and now we need, need to make a you know, bigger number. 75 also goes into it. We need factors of 3, and 5, and 5. But we have a factor of 3, and we have a factor of 5, so all we need is... One more five. One more factor of five. Twelve times uh, whatever three five times five is. Uh, so twelve times one seventy five, right? Seventy times thirty. It's five times six. Seventy times thirty. And then if we take two, no, three, this three, and this five, and this five, we get 75. So 75 times seven times four, that's 28. So 75 times 28, 70 times 30, 12 times 175. These are all what? What number is that? And it could be any smaller of a number because we need those minimum factors so that we can make 12, 70, and 75. How did you get 20? Uh, okay, let me double check. Uh, here's 3 times 5 times 5 is 75. Mm -hmm. The other factors that are left are 7 times 2 times 2. 7 times 4. Oh, oh okay. So all we really did is choose the prime factorization of the common denominator so that it includes all of the factors for 12, all of the factors for 70, all of the factors for 75, but not more than we need. We need two factors of 2 here for, for this guy. Well, that factor of 2 can be reused to make 70. We need a factor of 3 and a 12, so we don't need to bring in a new factor for 75 because we can reuse that for 75. Yeah? Um, that, just to me, it kind of seems a lot complicated. So can you just like take the all the numbers that from the three branches or whatever, yeah. the lower ones, and yeah. multiply them at equals 2,100, and then just figure out, like, do 2,100 divided by 12, and we know that 1,500 times 12 is um, can you do that? I like the brain. Oh, yeah, I mean, so yeah. you're saying that you can just multiply these together? No, like, well... These? Yeah, those. I multiply them all together. If you multiply all these together, you won't get 2,100, you get something much bigger. You get 60... Oh, okay, well, I did something and I got it, so... <laughs> oh, maybe I did. Maybe the ones that... These ones. Equals, I did. Sure, yeah. I mean, we know we need 12 to go into it. I'm, I'm doing what you're saying in just a different way. Okay. So if we get 2100, then I can just take 2100 divided by 12. I figured out that's what it's 175 divided by 70 divided by 75. Yeah. And then I figure out what I need over here, right, to multiply the numerators by. Okay. But in the end, really what happens is I need this factor of 3 and 2 and 2. If I don't have a 3 and 2 twos, I won't make 12. I won't have a factor of 12. Okay. I need a factor for, for 70. I need a factor of 2, 5, and 7. I already have a factor of 2 here. I only have one factor of 2, so I don't need to recreate that. But 5 is new. I need a 5. Also, there's no 7. I also need a 7. But when I put all these factors together, I can use 2 times 5 times 7, 2 times 5 times 7, to make the 70. Okay, then I come over here to 75. I need a factor of 3. There was already a factor of 3 here. I need a factor of 5. We already picked up a factor of 5 from 70. I need a second factor of 5. I need a 5 and a 5 and a 3. So I do need another five. 
So there we have it. 3 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times another 5 gives us the smallest number possible, that 12 centimeters against 75 also is. Yes? So when you first did the, the, to get the prime numbers, mm -hmm. why did you leave out one of the two? You left the two out on uh, 70. You mm -hmm. didn't really need it, but why didn't you? Because two or more. Because something? when I okay, so the three, the two, and the two make 12, right? Mm -hmm. So 12 times uh, this, which comes out to be 175, yeah, times 175 mm -hmm. makes 2100. Yeah. Okay. Now I need to make sure 70 goes into this number. Well, I'm done having to make 12. I can borrow that two, I don't know if this is making more sense, oh, but I can yeah. kind of borrow that two yeah. from the 12 factors, yeah. put it together with the five and sevens, that'll make 70. Okay, so like, you, you just can't get a bigger number. Yeah, if I put in another two, it would make it 4,200, like twice as big. Okay. And I know, there might be some other way that you feel is easier, but when we start to think of numbers in terms of their prime factors, of other numbers needing those same factors, about the definition of factor, about divisibility, all of these things, rather than the quickest, easiest route, then later on we have new things to learn that rely on understanding of factors of numbers and prime factors, and it makes it a whole lot easier. And not only prime factors of numbers, but prime factors of things called polynomials. Prime factors of, well, some other more complicated things. If we put, on our, put off our learning of prime factors and deep understanding of prime factors and like working with them closely, we're gonna have to understand them down the road and with even more complicated objects. So let's understand what factors of numbers are so that we can then under understand what factors of polynomials are. You don't even know what polynomials are right now. You've got to trust me on this. I think I had, uh, gosh. Jenna. Sometimes, what I'm asking you to do is, you know, trust me and, and I know that there is probably some other easier way and that feels less complicated and less confusing. I hear you on that. But, again, I appreciate you saying that because it is part of that. Uh, just me asking you to do the favor, you really you the favor, and me, because it makes it easier on me when I can say, remember when we did this? And you say, yes, I do. We can just launch into that other thing. Okay, we can call it Omeo down the road. And try to instill shapes and actual stuff. understanding of what's going on, not just shortcuts so that you can be done. So I'm glad that it makes And I realize that it is also at the same time kind of complicated. Right. But you know what? Multiplying 12 times 70 times 75 to get some, what, 60,000 something? It's 63,000. 63,000. Well, that's also complicated because then I need to simplify the fraction at the end, and I'm, I'm just searching and searching and searching for a factor that these two giant numbers have in common. Okay, they can, they pay supercomputers a lot of money to figure out what the factors of really big numbers are. So we don't want to do that to ourselves. Try to find the factors of these giant numbers. Okay, so I'm going to give you three more fractions to add together. Okay, but follow the method. I need help, Ryan can help you. I saw him doing good. All right, so here I have the prime factorization for all three. We just need to make sure that our number, we'll just put it over here, where we'll pick all the prime factors of our number. We need to make sure that it has a factor of two, a factor of two, and a factor of three to put together to make 12. So we'll start with those. And whichever number 
happen to be on the left, that you could just need all those factors. Right? You just start with those. Ones. I have a question yeah. about 30. I yes. used to try factorization and I got 3 through 5. Because I did 6 and 5. Three, what did I do? I did 3 times 10. Right? I did 3 times 15, which I shouldn't have done. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So, we got the 2 and the 2 and the 3. All right. What does it take to make a 30? It takes a factor of 3 and a factor of 2 and a factor of 5. So I come over here to the factored form of my denominator. I've got a 3, I've got a 2 already. I just need a 5. So this number, we're going to need a bigger one, but this number so far does have 12 as a factor, and it also has 30 as a factor. Right? 12 times 5, 30 times 2. So here, for the fact for 18, we need a factor of 3, a second factor of 3, and a factor of 2. Well, here we have a factor of 2, and a factor of 3. We need a second factor of 3. Okay, if we don't, then we can't make 18. So we'll throw another factor of 3 in there. So we got 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. 2 times 3 times 5 is our 30. And for 18, we have 3 times 3 times 2. 18. I'm just confirming that all three of these numbers are factors of this bigger number. Okay? So, what's 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 3? 180. 180? Yep. All these numbers should go into 180. Let's just, I don't know, make sure. 12 times something is 180? 15. 15, 12, 30, 30 times? 6. 18 times 10. All right, so as was pointed out, we did not add those previous fractions together, so let's do that here. 12 times 15, so we need to multiply 7 by 15. 30 times 6, so we need to multiply 23 times 6. 18 times 10, so we need to multiply 17 times 10. Okay. And what we've guaranteed, by making sure, first of all, that these fractions are all in their simplest form, which they are, I wrote them that way, and by finding the smallest denominator possible, we will not have to simplify our answer, because they're not going to share any factors. Okay? <coughs> Alright, so, well, maybe, maybe coincidence will cause us to have to simplify it. Let's see. Um, so 7 times 15 is 105, is that right here? 105, over 180 of course, uh, 6 times 23, 138, 138 over 180, and then of course 170, 180, we're going to add them together, 105 plus 138 plus 170, 413. These are for um, Michaela Muller and Marie Stoltz. We're going to turn our attention to some exponents. All I want you to do for each of these, looks like a fraction. For instance, 2 to the 4, what does it mean? 2 times 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 2 times
Yeah, I want you to just expand the exponent part of these expressions. Okay? Okay, um, simply get one final number, really, is all you need to do. Get one final number, evaluate the expression. Okay. But as you're doing that, think about what it means to say to the fourth, or say to the second power, or say to the third power. Notes. On your own notes for all four of these, come to some final number. Uh, okay, of course, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is not very hard. 16. What I'm really doing here is try, try to see if I can catch you in common mistakes. Okay. Um, what does to the power of 2 mean? multiply by itself twice. So in this case, what is the number that I want to multiply by itself twice? Six, Six right? And the parentheses, I feel, communicate that clearly. Okay? Uh, maybe if I wrote it like this, maybe now it's slightly more confusing? Well, I have this does, right? We're going to talk about that. I think we're going to lose time here. Hello? Mistake. It would be to multiply 4 times 6 before you square. Now, not because of PEMDAS. We're going to watch a video next time about PEMDAS, about the order of operations, and how I do not love it. It is not my favorite thing. Okay? And the video will explain why, and it's not anything against any person who might love PEMDAS. But, I don't know, watch it and see what you think. But, here's the deal. I think it's pretty clearly communicated by the parentheses that I want you to take the second power to the six, and I don't really want the four to be any part of it. Okay? Here, it might be a little more confusing. Should I multiply four times six, and then square it? Should I take six to the second, and then multiply it by four? Well, there is an order of operation. We'll talk about that next time, but we should be taking six to the second power, because I very clearly marked it off in parentheses. I put a big fence around six and said, this is the number, this is it. Make, make that to the second power. Multiply these together. What do we get? Four times 36. Okay, great. Same story here, except for what are we multiplying by itself? Three times? Negative three. Not, not negative three. So five times negative three times negative three times negative three, that's gonna be five times negative 27, negative 135, I think, if I remember right. Question. Um, so, on the one pre pre previous one, I thought that with the parentheses, or the parentheses kind of marked off that six to by itself, and I kind of put the exponent where four was. Exponent where four was? Like, like it was uh, having four times four, and I kind of did it wrong. To there, like you moved it over there? Yeah. Or did you do it to both? No, I said like. So you just kind of like forget about it there yeah. and put it there. Hmm. So I guess I didn't work that Well, yeah, I guess we kind of have to say like I purposefully put the two with the six and I wanted it to be there. Um, we'll talk about that more. The very last one here, we're multiplying something by itself three times. What are we multiplying by itself three times? Two thirds. Two thirds. So it's three factors, or three fractions. Two thirds. Like two thirds. Like two thirds. And we multiply straight across, right? So across the numerator, we wind up getting two to the third, and on the denominator, we wind up getting three to the third. Right? There's three twos, and three threes. We're multiplying together. These are properties of exponents. I'll pass these out to you.